Hello, folks and goats. Welcome to Deep Within the Command Valley for another Monday Deck Tech. Now, we've had lots of exciting spoilers coming out of Double Masters, and a lot of commanders that are being reprinted that are some of my favorite in the history of Magic, and one specifically that I've wanted to build for a long time. Before we begin, I just wanted to remind you guys, if you enjoy our content, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. We super appreciate it and hope you continue to support us. Another reminder that this episode and this podcast is brought to you by GameGrid Lehigh. If you are in the Utah County area, please check them out. Another thing before we begin, I just wanted to announce that Command Valley will be starting our Patreon, which will be coming out in the coming two weeks. We have a lot of exciting things to present to you guys, so please stay tuned if you want to join in on our Patreon and get access to a lot of fun content and exclusive stuff. So spoiler alert, this will also be the commander that I will be playing on our next episode of Duel of the Peaks, Double Masters Edition. And that commander is Riku of Two Reflections. Riku is two green, blue, red for a 2-2 legendary creature human wizard. He reads, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay blue, red. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for that copy. And whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay blue and a green. If you do, create a token that's a copy of that creature. So this is a super fun and wide deck. There's so many options that you could take with Riku. You could just go full on the token theme where you're just creating tokens of your creatures. Or you could go on the spell slinging theme where you're just copying spells. And I decided to do a little bit of both. To help represent that, the all-star card in this deck, and the, the card that I built this deck around is this card called Guided Passage. Guided Passage is Teamer, so green, blue, red for a sorcery, reveal the cards in your library. An opponent chooses from among them a creature card, a land card, and a non-creature non-land card. You put the chosen cards into your hand, then shuffle your library. Now this card may seem like it's kind of weak because they can just grab, you know, just, you know, a ramp spell, a land spell, and then, you know, a mana dork. But the way that we've built this deck is that there are 10 creatures in this deck, and every single one of those creatures is a haymaker, and your opponents do not want to see them coming. This deck is also built around copying spells, so ideally we're going to get multiple copies of Guided Passage and get some big threats from our library. Let's start off with the 10 big creatures in this deck, because obviously we're going to go and we'll get into the spell copying and the spell sling a little bit later. So when casting Guided Passage, these are going to be the 10 creatures that your opponents have a choice to choose from. Biogenic Ooze, which is 3 green green, and it reads, When Biogenic Ooze enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 green ooze creature token. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each ooze you control. For 1 green green green, you can create a 2-2 green ooze creature token. Consecrated Sphinx is 4 blue blue for a flyer. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw 2 cards. Scourge of the Throne is 4 red red for a flying dragon. He's got Dethrone, and whenever Scourge of the Throne attacks for the first time each turn, if it's attacking the player with the most life or tied for the most life, untap all attacking creatures. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. Vigor, 3 green 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 for a 6-6 six, six with Trample. If damage would be dealt to a creature you control other than Vigor, prevent that damage, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. When it's put into a graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. Agent of Treachery is 5 blue blue for a 2-3 human rogue. When Agent of Treachery enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. At the beginning of your end step, if you control 3 or more permanents you don't own, draw 3 cards. Balefire Dragon for 5 red red, we've got a 6-6 six, six flying dragon. Whenever Balefire Dragon deals combat damage to a player, it deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. Nyxbloom Ancient, 4 green 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 for a 5-5 five, five with trample. If, if you tap a permanent for mana, it produces 3 times as much of that mana instead. Crater Hoof Behemoth. 5 green 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 for a 5-5 five, five beast with haste when it enters the battlefield. Creatures you control gain trample and get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of creatures you control. Stonehoof Chieftain which is an 8-8 eight, eight for a 7 and a green with trample and, and indestructible. Whenever another creature you control attacks it gains trample and indestructible until end of turn. And finally we've got it that betrays. For 12 generic we've got a 11-11 Eldrazi with Annihilator 2. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So those are the only creatures in this deck. And what's important to note is that all of these creatures are non-legendary creatures, so we're going to be able to copy them with Riku. But we also have other ways of copying our creature tokens with instants and sorceries. So let's go through those right now. Let's say we've casted the Guided Passage and we've gotten a couple of those creatures, or maybe just one. We cast that creature, now how are we going to be able to abuse that creature? Well, first off, we can make a token copy of it from Riku, but we also have cards like the replicate side of repudiate replicate 
which creates a token that's a copy of creature you control. And for one green blue, we have a sorcery, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Cackling counterpart is one blue blue. For an instant, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. You can also flash it back for five blue blue. Quasi duplicate, which is one blue blue for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, and you can also jumpstart it. Mythos of a Luna, which is two blue blue for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target permanent. If red green was spent to cast a spell, instead create a token that's a copy of that permanent, except the token has when this permanent enters the battlefield. If it's creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Stolen Identity is four blue blue for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature, and also has cipher. And then Supplant Form, which is four blue blue. Return target creature to its owner's hand. You create a token that's a copy of that creature. Now all of these are also instant and sorcery spells, which Riku cares about those too. So let's say we grabbed a Scourge of the Throne. We've casted the Scourge of the Throne. We've paid the mana for Riku to make a copy of it. Now we have two Scourge of the Thrones. Then we can cast Quasi Duplicate. We cast Quasi Duplicate and on the stack, we pay the blue and red from Riku to make a copy of that spell. So now we have two Quasi Duplicate spells that are copying both the Scourge of the Thrones. Now we have four Scourge of the Thrones. Now you can repeat this process for any of the creatures that they have grabbed, Biogenic Ooze, Nyx Bloom Ancient, It That Betrays. These are all scary creatures and it just gets so much scarier the more copies that we make. So let's talk about spell copying. Now in the past two years, we've actually gotten a lot of support for the idea of copying spells. Of course, we've got the classic spells such as Double Cast, Increasing Vengeance, Reverberate, Twin cast. These are all spells that can copy another spell on the stack. Some of them are a little bit more flexible and they can copy other players' instants and sorcery spells. But mostly we're just going to try to copy our own spells because we know that we're going to be casting a lot of good stuff. And the best part of this too is that these are also instant and sorcery spells so we can copy them with Riku. So say, let's go through it again. We've casted the quasi duplicate targeting our Scourge of the Throne. We've made a copy of it from Riku, paying the blue and red. We cast Reverberate, targeting the quasi duplicate. We now have another copy. On the stack, we pay the blue and red into Riku to make another copy of it that targets the quasi duplicate. Now we have six Scourge of the Thrones coming onto the battlefield. It's so fun. And I can say this because I have done it. Now, of course, all of this takes a lot of mana. So we have a lot of mana ramp into this deck that we will get to, don't worry. But just for now, imagine that we do have a bunch of mana to cast these spells because it is very mana intensive. However, this brings us to the next category in our deck, which is going to be the spell copying static effects. Enchantments that stay on the battlefield that copy our spells, such as the most recent, which came from M21, Double Vision, which is three red red for an enchantment. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. Twinning Staff, which is three generic for an artifact. If you would copy a spell one or more times and said copy it that many times plus an additional time, you may choose new targets for the additional copy. You can also pay 7 and tap it to copy target instant or source spell you control, but that's a lot of mana, we're not really going to be doing that since we already have Riku. Thousand Year Storm, which is 4, blue red for an enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcerer spell, copy it for each other instant and sorcerer spell you've cast before this turn. You may choose new targets for the copies. So that can get pretty nuts. Once we cast a fork spell, we can cast another fork spell, which can copy that fork spell, which can copy the other, which can copy the quasi duplicate that we're targeting to our Scourger Thrones. Pretty busted. Swarm Intelligence, which is 6 and a blue for an enchantment whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell, you may choose new targets for that copy. And then finally, we've got Bonus Round, which is a sorcery. It's one red red until end of turn whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, that player copies it and may choose new targets for the copy. So once we've ramped to a lot of mana, and this card is absolutely absurd. With those enchantments and Bonus Round, we can copy our spells multiple times, in addition to casting our fork spells to copy them. All right, now let's talk about our win conditions. Obviously, bringing out multiple copies of Scourge of the Throne is a win condition, but we also have other ways of winning besides just copying our creatures. In case our plan gets stopped, somebody casts a board wipe and we don't have a counter spell in hand. We have other ways of winning, and the specific other way we have of winning is with Firebolt spells. Cards like Fireball, Fall of the Titans, Comet Storm, and Electro Dominance are all X spells that can deal damage to players. So what we do with these is that we put a lot of our mana into it, we cast the fork spells, the copy spells, we have a thousand year storm out, we're copying it multiple times and dealing a bunch of damage to our opponents. Now if, if, if this is the route that you want to go, what you really want to do is get a Nyx Bloom Ancient, because if we have a Nyx Bloom Ancient, we've managed to copy it even just once, our mana is now tapping for nine times as much, because the first Nyx Bloom Ancient triples our mana to three, and then the next one triples it to nine. And you only need a couple of mana open to be able to take out an opponent in one shot. 
and you can copy the spells so you take two opponents out in one shot and if you have a double vision out you can take all three of your opponents out in one shot pretty crazy so that that's the crux of the idea of how we're going to win by copying our best creatures or by just spell casting and spell sling and copying spells until we take our opponents out before we move on to the mana ramp, I just want to include some other very powerful spells that I've included in here that are mana intensive, but if we can copy them even just once, it will be disastrous for our opponents. Mizix's Mastery, which is 3 and a red for a sorcery, exile target card that's an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. For each card exiled this way, copy it, and you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Exile Mizix Mastery. And you can also overload it for 5 red red red. You may cast the spell for its overload cost. If you do, change this text by replacing all instances of target with each. So if we pay that 5 red red red, we can exile all the instant and sorcery cards from our graveyard and cast them. A situation I have been in when I've casted a Mizzix Mastery is that I had a bonus round in my graveyard. So I casted that one first. I casted a Reverberate from my hand targeting the bonus round. So now all the instants and sorceries that I was going to cast off of the Mizzix Mastery from my graveyard were now going to be copied twice. And then from there, I just casted a Repudiate, a Quasi Duplicate, and a Cackling Counterpart. And I got a ton of copies of Scourge of the Throne. That's probably my favorite card in this deck. If not Nyx Bloom Ancient, one of those two. Another super awesome, super awesome spell we have in here is Expropriate, which is seven blue blue for a sorcery with Council's Dilemma. Starting with you, each player votes for time or money. For each time vote, take an extra turn after this one. For each money vote, choose a permanent owned by the, by the voter and gain control of it, and then exile Expropriate. So Expropriate is already a really good card on its own, but if we can copy it multiple times, we can gain multiple extra turns and steal a bunch of permanents, and that is just game ending on its own. And we also have Sunbird's Invocation, which is 5 and a red. Whenever you cast a spell from your hand, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is at spells converted mana cost. You may cast a card, reveal this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Sunbird's Invocation is very fun because not only can we get other instants and sorceries from our deck to cast, we can find those fork spells to cast because the spell that triggered the Sunburn's Evocation is still on the stack when we find that fork spell so we can target that spell on the stack with the fork spell and fork it from our library. Holy crap guys, this deck is a ton of fun. And then last up, we've got Genesis Ultimatum, which is green, green, blue, 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 red, red. For a sorcery, look at the top five cards of your library, put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand, exile Genesis Ultimatum. So we can cast this, make a copy of it maybe once or twice, look at the top 10 or 15 cards of our library and put those scary creatures onto the battlefield. You can also put all the lands, all the artifact ramp. This card is amazing. And boy, do I want to copy it multiple times. So that's the crux of our copying, and please keep in mind that Riku can also do it on its own. Obviously, Riku is going to be kind of a target because he's so powerful and he can do so much that he probably will get removed or something will happen to him. So this deck is also very efficient at doing things on its own. We can copy spells, make tokens without having Riku out, but when Riku is out, we have so much more potential which is exactly where you want your commander deck to be. You want your commander to be an assistant to your strategy, not the, the lead. And if he's taken down, you don't have anything to do. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about the ramp. Obviously, again, this, this deck is pretty man intensive. So we have tons of instant and sorcery and artifact ramp because we don't want any creature ramp because we want to keep those 10 creatures to the big, powerful, bad, awesome creatures. But we can also copy those spells to get more mana onto the battlefield. So. We have Rampant Growth, search your library for a basic land and put that card onto the battlefield. Tapped, Cultivate, and Kodama's Reach, which both read search your library for up to two basic land cards. Review those cards, put one onto the battlefield, tapped in the other into your hand, then shuffle your library. Harrow, which is two and a green for an instant as an additional cost to cast Harrow, sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. We can copy this and sacrifice one land to get four. Circuitous Root. Three and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards. Put them onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. Explosive Vegetation for three and a green, a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library. We also have Migration Pass, which does the same thing, but also has Cycling for two. Mana Reflection, which is four green green for an enchantment. If you tap a permanent for mana, it produces twice as much of that mana instead. Boundless Realms, which is six and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the number of lands you control and put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So if you can copy the spell just once, you're getting an absurd amount of mana. And then for our artifacts, we have Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Gruel Signet, Is It Signet, Simic Signet. 
And we also have a Wilderness Reclamation, which is three and a green for an enchantment at the beginning of your end step, untap all lands you control, so you can have spot for interaction, because we are using a lot of our mana on our turn as well. Moving on, let's talk about the card draw, because we want to be able to draw a lot of cards to keep our engine going, as with all commander decks, so let's go through it. Keep in mind that we can copy these spells. We have Ancestral Vision, which is for one blue, you can suspend four, and when you cast it, target player draws three cards, so it's nice to set up. When you cast it, you can fork it to draw six cards. Faithless Looting for one red, you can draw two cards and discard two cards, and you can flash it back for two in red. Finale of Revelation for blue, blue, X, you draw X cards of X is 10 or more. Instead, shuffle your graveyard into your library, draw X cards, untap up to five lands, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Then exile Finale of Revelation. Pull from tomorrow is blue, blue, X for an instant, draw X cards, then discard a card. Chemistry's Insight, which is three and a blue. For an instant, draw two cards, which you can also jumpstart. Drawn from Dreams, which is two blue blue for a sorcery. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Return of the Wild Speaker, which is four and a green for an instant. Choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. Or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until end of turn. Then we also have Ristic Study, Mystic Remora, Underworld Breach, which I'm going to count as card draw because you can use those cards. Seda Sanctuary, which is two and a blue for an enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control a red or green permanent, draw a card, then discard a card. If you control a red permanent and a green permanent, instead draw two cards, then discard a card. Super cheap budget option for drawing cards if you can't afford a Ristic Study, which most of us can't. And then we also have a Mirror Maid in here, which is one blue blue for an enchantment. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any enchantment or artifact on the battlefield. This is one of my favorite cards for budget, because if somebody else has a Ristic Study, you can copy it. If you want to copy your Thousand Year Storm, or you want to copy your Double Vision, you can use this for that as well. Finally, we have our Interaction and Board Wipes. Of course, we have the Fireball-esque effects that can also deal damage to creatures. But if not, we have Cyclonic Rift. One in a blue return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and you can overload it for six in a blue. Beast Within, which is two in a green for an instant. Destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Crossan Grip, which is two and a green for an instant with split second. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. We also have Reality Shift, which is one in a blue for an instant. Exile target creature. Its controller manifests the top card of its library. And then we have a couple of counter spells in here. Obviously, to keep our strategy intact, we've got Counterspell, Arcane Denial, Sinister Sabotage, Narset's Reversal, and Delay. And then last but not least, let's talk about the mana base in our deck. Our deck is primarily focused into green. So since all of our mana ramp is green, we're going to have a little bit more green in our mana base to make up for the green spells that we're casting at the first part of the game. So just a quick rundown of the non-basic lands that I've put in here. I've put in a Breeding Pool, Fabled Passage, Frontier Bivouac, Hinterland Harbor, Is It Guildgate, Rootbound Crag, Rugged Highlands, Shivan Reef, Simic Guildgate, Stomping Grounds, Sulphur Falls, Swiftwater Cliffs, Thornwood Falls, the three thriving lands from Jumpstart, Thriving Bluff, Grove, and Isle, and then a Yavamaya Coast. And for the rest, I've just put basic lands into this deck, and I haven't had a problem with it. Now, of course, if you want to go budget, if you want to do a little bit more budget on the mana base, which I am in that boat, you can just play the Guild Gates, the thriving lands, the tri lands. It's okay if your lands come in tapped. Most of our turns are going to be ramping for the first part of the game, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the deck tech route for Riku of Two Reflections. I am having so much fun with this deck, and I know that you guys will too. This deck has a lot of different options and routes to go down. You can do a lot of different things. So if you are looking for a spell copying, creature token making monster deck, this is the deck for you. Once again, if you like our content, please give us a like and a subscribe. We very much appreciate it. And me specifically, I appreciate it. I, I am so grateful for all of you. We're just a bunch of nerds creating content and you guys watch it. So shout outs to every single one of you. And with that, stay safe out there. Have a great rest of the week and we will see you next time.